In this video, we're going to talk about application ID, which I personally believe is one of the best things for running for us when we're looking at a Palo Alto firewall. Uh, this is what kind of separates your uh, standard firewalls, such as Cisco devices or uh, routers that run ACLs and a next generation firewall. For example, if we go ahead and we look at our firewall here, so I've got my system up and running and we went ahead and we created a couple of a couple of roles here. We created a uh, permit for private to be able to access the internet and then we copied that and we created a permit for the DMZ to access the internet. Now when we created that, we went in and if we scroll over to the right, we can see that we specifically permitted along with that some applications to be able to run through it. And this is where app ID comes in. At the same time, we also chose this application default as uh, in order to say, use these applications on their default ports and configurations. Now we didn't necessarily need to do that. What we could have done is instead of choosing the individual applications, we could have chose ports. For instance, if I edit my security policy here for my private internet, and I come over here to applications, I could just simply delete all these. So if I go ahead and remove them all and then under service and URL category, uh, under service, I can add and then I can add in a service. Right now there's just the two services, HTTP and HTTPS. What the service here does is essentially says which port. Uh, so which port do I want to allow? HTTP is port 80 and service is 443. So that, if I go ahead and save that, then basically it will allow any application, there we go, any application that runs over either HTTP or HTTPS to be able to be approved by this rule, in this case, in order to go out to the internet. So let's check to see exactly how the differences are there. Uh, in a traditional firewall or traditional access list environment, uh, you start making rules. For instance, let's say that we need DNS uh, in order to be able to be allowed to go through our firewall. For DNS to work, we create a rule that basically says allow port 53. Uh, depending on our environment, this could be TCP and or UDP. And that firewall, when DNS traffic comes in, it looks at it and it says, yes, you are on port 53, therefore you meet our DNS rule, therefore I will allow you to go through. However, and this is where the traditional firewalls begin to fall short, uh, port 53 can actually be used by quite a few different things, such as, well, BitTorrent. Uh, BitTorrent, you can go ahead and you can configure it and you can tell it, uh, you know what, my normal ports that I want to run on are blocked. So go ahead and reconfigure to run on port 53. And then when it hits the firewall, the firewall is going to say, oh, 53, I have a rule that allows port 53 to go through. And therefore it goes right through the internet. This also works with other uh, other data that we don't necessarily know about. Uh, for instance, let's say I get a virus or a hacker is into my organization and he has some command and control type communications, oftentimes referred to as C2. Uh, C2 for command and control. And oftentimes that will run over port 53 because port 53 is allowed in most environments. So our C2 traffic comes into the firewall. It goes across 53. The firewall says 53, I have an allow. So then it goes right through the firewall out to the internet where my hacker is controlling my environment. So that's a traditional firewall. We create an access list that says allow this port from this source to this destination. And that can be exploited uh, even if set up correctly. Now we compare that to a Palo Alto and what Palo Alto does is it actually looks at an ID 
of the application. It identifies the applications as the traffic goes through it. So when DNS traffic comes in, it actually looks at the traffic. It doesn't just look and say, are you port 53? No, it looks and it says, are you DNS traffic? And if so, then it goes ahead and lets it through. Long say BitTorrent uh, and they reconfigure their environment to run on port 53. It hits the Palo Alto and the Palo Alto says, you know, you're running on port 53 but you're not DNS. Therefore, I'm going to go ahead and just deny you. You are not allowed in my environment. Uh, and I'm going to hopefully tell the security administrators that somebody is running rogue traffic in my environment. This also works for that whole command and control environment or some other data that I have never seen before. Let's say that there's a zero day exploit that's occurring, uh, some command and control traffic, some other virus traffic hits my Palo Alto, the Palo Alto inspects for DNS and then denies it. You're not DNS traffic. You can't come into my environment. This application ID is kind of the key of how all of the Palo Alto works and what makes them so special. If we look back at our Palo Alto, that we can look under our objects tab here. And we'll actually see that there are, see objects and applications. There are, it says down here at the very bottom, 3,423 as of this moment, uh, different applications that are identified by the Palo Alto. Each of these uh, applications can be allowed or denied based on my desire. So for instance, uh, when we originally set up our web traffic, we set up a couple of different options, such as DNS was one of the applications that we allowed through. Uh, there we go, DNS. And here we can click on this and it gives us more details about DNS. It gives us more uh, ge general details. Uh, what is it? What ports does it normally run on? Are there any dependencies or other uses that are necessary for this to work? Hey, here's where you can go to get some more information. Uh, there's a Wikipedia article, there's a Google search, there's a Yahoo search. Various characteristics such as, is this used in malware? Is this used wildly? Are there a lot of known vulnerabilities? Yes. Some various options for with regards to TCP and UDP timeouts. And then lastly, some categorization and risks of the data of itself. Is this protocol a potentially high risk protocol? Uh, this is on a rating of one to five. Four is not quite the highest, but it is still pretty high simply because of the fact that it is widely used, uh, used by malware, has known vulnerabilities, and is oftentimes implicitly trusted. So we have over 3,400 different, uh, different applications. Uh, the great thing here is that this list is constantly updated. So we can constantly get new information, not just on new applications, but also what their rankings are. Uh, here in this uh, upper half of the view, we can actually start filtering. Uh, maybe we don't want general internet, we only want business systems. So we can start filtering on business systems. Um, maybe management, browser-based, uh, with a risk level of one, and then has various characteristics, such as transferring files. And there we can see that there's one application that fits all of those requirements, called Quantum Edge TMS, whatever that is. Uh, at that point, we can then go forward and start you know, configuring our environment, configuring our Palo Alto specifically to allow that one application through. Now, so what we have here is we have two different configurations. We have for our DMZ, we are configuring our applications. It's actually inspecting the application traffic, which like I said, is probably one of the main benefits of getting a Palo Alto firewall or other um, new age or new, uh, new classification firewalls. Our second rule here, we are allowing specific ports that would allow all applications through. Uh, which could be good and could be bad. This could be good because this application inspection right here does take some time. It takes some time and some processing. 
And, well, the application has to be known to the environment. If instead I say specifically allow this port, it's a lot quicker, doesn't require as much processing power of my Palo Alto, uh, and works with protocols that aren't necessarily known. So depending on my environment, I may use both of these uh, in different zones for my systems. Uh, otherwise, when I choose an application up here, I can choose application default for my service. Uh, what that basically does is it knows DNS runs on port 53, so that means it's going to look on port 53 specifically for DNS. SSL is on 443, and then web browsing is on port 80. So it's only going to look on those specific ports for those specific applications. Uh, so if somebody comes along, say with a web browser, and they try to run some non-web browsing traffic across port 80, well, there's a lot of things you can run over, over port 80. There's a whole lot of hacking or attack tools that you can use, that a hacker can use in order to attack my environment that run over port 80. The Palo Alto will then inspect it and say, this is not a web browser. Because it's not a web browser, I'm not gonna let you through. And it's that great, it's that awesome. The fact that it can look at all of this information uh, and quantify exactly what's going on before allowing or denying the environment. All right, so a uh, few more details. How exactly does it handle all of this? Well, in the Palo Alto, it looks at a bunch of different things. Basically, it has classifications of the applications. And these are the ports. These are the well-known ports. Uh, like I was saying, web browsing runs across port 80. Uh, H, uh, SSL browsing runs port, across port 443. Uh, therefore, when I say run this application, it starts off by simply looking at the port for that application. <clears throat> Additionally, there are signatures which help identify the application. Identify the app. <clears throat> and these signatures can actually be pretty in depth. Uh, what it does, for instance, for web browsing is it can actually look in the content of the, of the requests. If my request is something such as uh, get dot slash, if that is my request, uh, that is a traditional web browsing request type. Uh, and it knows that it has a signature that identifies that as a web browsing request and therefore it allows it through. Allows or denies depending on my policy. It also does uh, decryption and this is really useful in a lot of places where SSL is everywhere. Uh, many of the web pages you go to nowadays are HTTPS by default, uh, and in fact, many of the web pages you go to cannot run anything but HTTPS. You'll you'll get just simply a redirect to their secure page. Uh, decryption is something that you can set up with your Palo Alto. Uh, there are a couple of steps in order to set that up, and we will in fact set that up in a later video. Uh, but the SSL uh, decryption allows me to essentially be a man in the middle. Uh, I can then decrypt all of the encrypted data that's going across the Palo Alto. Uh, once I've decrypted that, I can then check the ports, I can then check the signatures, and I can decode the data in there to determine if that's something that I want to allow or deny. Uh, decoders, well, this is uh, kind of the same thing with the SSL everywhere, but this allows us to find tunneled traffic. Uh, tunneled traffic is basically one protocol on top of another protocol. Uh, a lot of times you will see, uh, for instance, uh, email. Uh, email can run MAPI, M-A-P-I, over. SSL. Uh, the decoders are basically work with the decryption in order to decrypt the data and then decode the underlying protocol. So just because somebody is running SSL does not mean that they're hid, hidden from me. Uh, I could still decode their traffic and then allow or deny it based on the applications I want to work. And then lastly are the applications. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, the actions. Uh, these actions are normally pretty simple. Uh, allow, deny, uh, there is a drop. 
drop. Uh, there's a scan to where we can scan it for more information. And then we can also do some quality of service environments to where we can define uh, this type of traffic has a higher priority than other types. Uh, so for instance, uh, somebody browsing YouTube may not be quite as important as a voice uh, phone call that's going on at the same time. So QoS can def change the quality for the YouTube traffic to a lower priority, but the phone call to a higher priority in order to balance out uh, the importance of the data. So there you go. That is a brief introduction into using app ID in the Palo Alto environment. Uh, in the next video, we're actually going to walk through an example of setting up app ID and seeing how uh, allowing some applications on some sites work while de de denying other applications on those same sites.